Hello, my name is Doug Lazier, and I recently Sage announced that they will be giving a free license for the Sage budgeting planning software to the 100 and 300 cloud customers. So in light of that, I just wanted to record a quick video uh, to show those customers uh, what it would look like to get started with using the budgeting planning software. So the first thing I wanted to show you is um, after you do the install of the software, then the software will pop up a little screen. We call it the Quick Start Wizard. And I have a screenshot of that here. And it just simply asks you to, to tell the software whether you're using Sage 100 Standard and Advanced, which uses the ProvideX driver, or Sage 100 Premium and Sage 300, both of which use Microsoft SQL Server for the database engine. Either way, you would, it's a fairly simple wizard. You just uh, give it a username, password, and then uh, select the company database that you're that you're using for your general ledger software. And then the wizard goes through, examines that, that company database, and reads the information that it needs to configure the budgeting software. As I say, it's pretty, pretty simple and straightforward. And you can ask Sage Technical Support for assistance uh, on the installation or using this wizard. All right, let's jump into the software where I have already created a uh, configuration for our use. And um, we are going to select the uh, plan and then go to the menu item plan where we have another wizard called create basic budgets a simple little wizard that allows us to select from a variety of built-in templates and much like you would download a template from Microsoft Office for Word or Excel um, what you select ideally you can use as is but because it's a template, you can make modifications to it if you need to. Same concept with these templates. All right, let me just uh, real quick show you what it looks like. So if I select one of the template items here, I get a short description here that explains uh, in, in a little detail what, what that template provides. I also have the option to click on the button down here and get a much more verbose description as well as screenshots showing you how this template or set of templates will work. All right, I am going to uh, select one of these. I think probably one of the better better options here, and uh, we'll walk our way through through the little wizard. Okay, um, the one I chose uh, allows us to create a baseline <clears throat> budget amount, and uh, in walking through the wizard, it asks us to identify our main or natural account and then our breakdown within our plan tree structure. So uh, we have many departments and locations. So like the sales department, the facilities department, locations like North America, South America, um, South America, Europe, and Asia. So what we want to do is we want to first uh, break our, our organization into the locations, but then further refine it to the department level. So, I'm sorry, we want to go the other way. Let's, let's flip that around. It's easy enough to switch that. And we will do department followed by location. So what that means is, say I'm my sales department manager of, of the United States would be doing the budgeting for his particular plan sheet. Sally, who manages all of the sales team, then will uh, see an aggregation, a summary of the various sales locations. So you can see the tree structure that it starts to build. And the next part of it is just simply identifying uh, the name of the plan that we're building, the year that we're budgeting. So we're going to budget for 2019, and then assigning <clears throat> a budget code. <clears throat> so uh, Sage 300 customers, you'll recognize budget codes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Sage 100 customers, you would have the original and revised budget codes. If you've created additional ones in your general ledger, those would show up here as well. Uh, let's go ahead and just presume we're doing this for Sage 100, so we'll choose the original budget code. Next step is uh, to assign a range of accounts for each of the sections 
the particular template we're using is is arranged in an income statement format. So therefore, we have the revenue, the cost of goods sold, salary, and GNA type expenses. So all we're going to do here is identify the range of accounts that we use for revenue. So 4,000 through 499 makes sense, but perhaps we want to stop it uh, right before we get to maybe the freight. So our range would really go from 4,000 to 4,079. So let's go ahead and set that up. Now what if we have a situation where we have, we need to do a small range, skip over some accounts and start again with another range? Not a problem, as our ranges allow for multiple beginning and ending points, that is multiple ranges in the definition. So we can certainly start again with the uh, 4,100 and go through the end of the 4,000 range. So pretty simple and easy to do. All right, just for our, our demo purposes, let's go ahead and set up the rest of the, the ranges. We'll go to the COGS uh, as well, 4079. And then we'll go to the uh, expenses, 7000 through 8899. And our salary be the 6000 through uh, 6499. Pretty simple and straightforward. And um, now we're going to click Finish. It'll go through and uh, using our general ledger data, go ahead and build uh, templates and, uh, and the, uh, the, the foundation, the structure that we need for to begin our, our budgeting. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this next step. Anything that takes, uh, uh, takes any, any length of time, I'll do a fast forward just to, to keep this video short. Okay, looks like that's complete. So let's take a quick look at what it created. So created our tree structure for us, built the plan sheets. We have templates here. If we look at one of the templates, it gives us the kind of the basic structure. And uh, again, it's a template so you can modify this. Perhaps you need to add a marketing and a travel section in here. Um, I would, I would expect if, you, if you're going to make some changes uh, to the templates, then you'd want to get some training on, on the software. If you have to make significant or extensive modifications, you may very well need some um, consulting assistance to, to make those changes. I think that's all fairly reasonable, but, but again, it is a template that you can modify. And then it also created a global assumption sheet where we can put some baseline assumptions in here. So let's say our revenue is going to increase by 5%. Uh, COGS by 2. Salary is going to be 4.5. And our GNA expense will be 3.75%. Uh, so we're modifying the uh, global assumptions that will be used then to, uh, to build a baseline budget. OK. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, run a what we call plan processing, and it's going to pull the data from the general ledger, all of the uh, historical information by account, using that along with our global assumptions to then uh, create our baseline budget. Okay, and it looks like it's done. It took about um, about six minutes for all of the departments and locations in my sample company. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at what it created. And so the uh, individual plan sheets that it created, then for each of my location managers, we can see that uh, it created a baseline budget, filling in an annual amount. So this particular template that I chose, like the cells in blue are where we can, where our department manager can do their, uh, their budgeting. Uh, so if we uh, if we know that the uh, North America sales for pens uh, is going to go up this year, we can increase it by ten thousand dollars, and mathematically it'll spread to all of the different uh, periods. Um, if we know that we're going to do uh, gift sets, um, we can see that we have no history there. So so perhaps for this year we want to uh, to say that we're going to do. $50,000 in gift sets, and also some customization for the gift sets. Just a matter of going down and filling in these blue cells. 
Cost of goods sold for those same gift sets. So that, that's the concept here, is, is just sitting down with the, with the various managers and, and going through and fine-tuning the, uh, fine the budget. So let's take a look at, at uh, what it built a little bit broader here. You can see that uh, the tree structure we have has all of the locations uh, as, a, as a, uh, a branch of the sales department. If we look at the sales department, this is a, a summary, an aggregation sheet. So it shows us how we, the aggregated amounts across all of the sales locations. And then a summary of all of those of all of those department summaries then shows us a company-wide aggregation or summary. So across the entire organization we can see what our budgeted profit or loss is going to be. Okay, and of course you would want to go through perhaps multiple iterations working with your with your management team and fine-tune the, the budget. When it's all done, then we have a process that we use to uh, to gather up all of the budget dollars, the resulting budget dollars. And I'll go ahead and run that process here real quick. It's also fairly simple. And again, it's already set to the original budget for Sage 100, but if we're for a 300 uh, customer, then we'd be choosing one of the one, two, three, four, or five budget codes. And then we go ahead and tell it that we want to do uh, this process for all of the plan sheets. Okay, that's done, and that took uh, less than a minute. And so the the budget dollars that we just created are are stored here in what we call the resulting balances, and uh, this is the the collection of budget data that we created. So um, I'm not going to show you the process, but we have a process where we take this data back to the specific general ledger, 100 or 300. And those steps are unique depending on which general ledger you're using. So again, I'll just suggest that uh, you can get some assistance from the technical support team for help on doing that. But the reason we put the budget dollars back into the general ledger is because our Sage Intelligence, or, or whatever reporting tool you use, is going to look in those general ledger budgeting tables for the budget as well as looking uh, there for the, the actuals when you do your budget actual variance reporting. So that's the software is designed that for us to put the, the resulting budget dollars back in the general ledger. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there and hopefully this gave you a quick overview of the, uh, the basics of getting started with using the budgeting planning tool for our Sage 100 and 300 cloud customers. Thank you.